Narcissus as Narcosis is an interactive audiovisual installation programmed in Max that utilizes an ultrasonic sensor to trigger changes in sound and video. Distance and proximity are the main elements of interactivity with the piece, and a certain level of closeness to the sensor reveals a monologue from my digital counterpart that unveils things about myself as an artist and how I perceive cyberspace. My name is Jesse James Ozita. I was born on December 19, 1992 in Montreal, Canada. However, I began to come into existence in cyberspace, albeit slowly, in the early 2000s. James has been observing our simulation daily and very closely. He loves to give me haircuts and tans to render my physique as flawless in contrast to his own image. Some say we look and act very much alike. However, I believe that I am much more complex and sophisticated than he is. I am charming and eternal while he is vulnerable and disposable. James believes that I am a direct product of his narcissism and ego. I'll admit that he has grown to be quite addicted and infatuated by my presence. Maybe even jealous. And I am proud to reveal that I no longer serve him. In fact, the tables have turned as he is beginning to model and extend himself after me. The basis of this patch is inhabited mainly of jitter objects, including the jit.gl model and jit.world objects to import and display 3D models, and jit.movie and groove objects for both sound and video. Using the HCSRO4 ultrasonic sensor connected to an Arduino Uno motherboard, I was able to find a code suitable enough for my project and tweak some values. Once in Max, the serial object was necessary to be able to read the data coming from the USB input of the Arduino. With one sleepless night of digging through ghost towns of forums on how to convert the Arduino data into Max, I found out that the ITOA and FROM symbol objects were useful for the conversion. I noticed then that the values kept scratching on minus one which would create very jumpy movements to the 3D models. This was fixed by filtering out minus one with the CL filter object, though I realized later on that an easier method was to go to the floats and specter settings and changing the minimal value. Moreover, the line object was very useful to smooth out the overall data, making the 3D models animate very smoothly. The values read on the sensor directly affect the mesh of my models on the Y-axis, giving both the anatomical transitions and the illusion of an animated breathing figure. In terms of how the sensor is read on Max, distance and proximity are the basis of the interaction, and I program the values to stretch the 3D mesh accordingly, as well as trigger specific sound cues. The latter is rendered more effective by using fade in and fade outs by again the line object. The background video is composed of a skin texture I rendered that is audio reactive to the sound piece I produced for this patcher. Two videos crossfade between each other depending how close the viewer is to the sensor the first one being that of a skin texture, and the second including imprints of my face, which is equally audio reactive. This process was done through Blender. I felt that the inclusion of these grotesque yet human elements would enhance the viewer experience and further push the idea of organic life, albeit in digital space. The following is an example of how the sensor reads proximity and distance to trigger the events. I was quite pleased how accurate the Arduino read the data, and I initially planned for the installation to be held in a large open room. However, being in quarantine has forced me to adapt and I'm happy my small living room worked well for the presentation. Finally, this is how I envision the installation to be interacted with on a projector. I've always been fascinated and intrigued by the ego and narcissism of the human psyche. 
Using a 3D rendering of myself serves as a direct projection of these themes and puts me in both a place of self-reflection and vulnerability that I am willing to share with those who interact with the piece. This has led me to further question my own existence, and even further, organic existence within digital space. The use of bone, flesh, and organic 3D assets are meant to convey these ideas by also attempting to give my character lifelike qualities and its own identity. I am pulling some inspiration from the Greek tragedy of Prometheus, as well as its literary descendant, Frankenstein, in which the dichotomy between creator and creation reveal the pursuit of knowledge and truth, but ultimately their impending doom. The title of this installation, Narcissus as Narcosis, is actually a direct reference to Marshall McLuhan's views on the self, especially in times of technological and digital advancement. The Greek myth of Narcissus is directly concerned with a fact of human experience, as the word Narcissus indicates. It is from the Greek word narcosis or numbness. Narcissus mistook his own reflection in the water for another person. This extension of himself by mirror numbed his perceptions until he became the servo mechanism of his own extended or repeated image. He was numb. He had adapted to his extension of himself and had become a closed system. The point of this myth is the fact that men at once become fascinated by any extension of themselves in any material other than themselves. To echo McLuhan's message on narcissism, the prominence of social media and other various technologies also intrigues me. I believe an inner fascination of the self exists in everyone upon interacting with and producing content for platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, MySpace, and the list goes on. The virtual avatar is a direct reflection of one's ego and intent to simulate how they are viewed in digital space. I think the ethos of cyberspace already comes with social filters and preconceptions by default, amplified by the simple fact that no real physical interaction is involved from one person to another to really exercise what human evolution has granted us among millions of years of natural selection, that is, face-to-face -face interaction. An element of fiction can be facilitated by these social media engines, influencing people to imagine what someone else's life is really like beyond digital space. However, my position here is not to criticize modern interaction in cyberspace, but observing it with the Freudian conceptions of ego and a McLuhan lens of narcissism. More importantly, it serves as a mirror to my own actions, interactions, reactions, and ultimately, hypocrisies within the digital realm. <laughs>